This is Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6. And it reads, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. What if? All right, this is a lesson, and the lesson is inspired by this precept. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakudash, the bonus to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. All right, and the lesson topic is what if. And oftentimes when we think of what if, we oftentimes relate it to the worst case scenario. But what if the best case scenario is being prepared for us through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai? What if everything that we thought, um, the good feeling that we received when we heard this good news, what if all of those things are being prepared for you personally on this journey? All right, and that is the confidence that Paul speaks of in Philippians, as well as Colossians, and I'll grab that as well. This is Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12, and it reads, Put on therefore as the elect of Yahweh by Shemel Shai, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. And part of putting on as the elect is putting on a mindset of expectation in humility and faith of a reward at the end of this and what if the best case scenario is being prepared for you you know and I, I put emphasis on you because I know the feeling of um, challenging yourself to have the same confidence when it comes to your personal walk in this truth and it's something that when you first come into the truth, you understand it, you know it, but it's a process to apply it to your own personal walk. And that's why through the spirit and power of the al I do want to go into an exhortation to think about what if in the best case scenario for you, all right, we know that the Lord's going to save a remnant. But do you believe that you are a part of that remnant? When Paul talks about putting on, therefore, as the elect, do you put yourself in that position? Are you running uncertain or are you running with the understanding that there's a reward at the end of this? You know, we say this all the time through the spirit. Uh, we're not called to be perfect according to the works of the law, but we are called uh, to be better than we were before. All right, we're called to improve progress over perfection according to the law. All right, now this is Proverbs 24 and 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. And the Lord has put inside of our journey, especially in this last life, a process whereas whereby i should say if we do make a mistake in truth and in sincerity a sacrifice has been made so that we can get back on the bike and continue to rehearse the righteous acts but if you're focused on the mistake you made last tuesday it's taking away from your walk today If you believe that you're not going to make it based on a mistake you've made two weeks ago. Then you're losing an opportunity to be better today. And I make these lessons through the spirit uh, for myself, first and foremost, you know, but for all of those who um, go through the same type of um, obstacles and that is an obstacle of understanding that the Lord didn't call you to destroy you. And the Lord is not looking at you according to your iniquity. If so, you wouldn't be in this truth. 
and through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmel Shai. This is an exhortation to continue to put forth as the elect to be confident in this journey that you're on, to understand that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. All right, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm going to jump down to verse 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. All right, and that point being is if you're striving for this incorruptible crown through the spirit and poverty held by Shemel Shai, then you should not run uncertain, but run with an understanding that the Lord has a reward at the end of this trial. Not just in a general sense, but personally. You know, and brothers say this all the time. You know, um, having faith that the Lord is. And this relates to the um, precept in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, having faith that the Lord is. Is an easier concept than the belief and the faith that the Lord is and is a rewarder for you yourself in this personal journey and walk. And that's something that we have to go through certain trials and tribulations for the Lord to show us that he's with us through the deliverance of different situations we fall into. But those situations are meant to build our faith to a point where we understand that there's a reward even for us, Lord willing, we continue until the end. And this is where uh, joy is produced. This is where the ability to have that rejoicing always, like uh, Paul mentions, when you develop this understanding and this hopeful, lively hope and lively expectation of a reward at the end of the journey for you personally. And that is what it means to put on, therefore, as the elect. Because if the elect knew or they put on as the elect, if they expect a reward at the end of this, then they're going to have meekness. They're going to have charity. They're going to produce those fruits of the spirit because they understand that they're not running uncertainly. They're not doing the work in vain. They're, the labor of love will be remembered by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And that confidence in that is going to produce that type of fruit, that type of joy. And that's why this lesson is entitled, What If? This exhortation, if you will, is entitled, What If? Because what if, you know, the best case scenario is being prepared for you? What if? You know, there are times when you dare not think about the best case scenario because, you know, the, the mistakes, the falls, the trials, the tribulations. But those trials and tribulations aren't meant to shake your confidence in Yahweh Bashim Shai. It's meant to build it. And if it's not building it, then that means there's a, a, a situation of doubt. That the Lord is going to save you in your personal journey. And we have to continue to understand the bigger picture. All right. And that's why I started with Philippians 1 and 5. And I'll grab it again. All right. This is Philippians 1 and 6. Excuse me. Being confident of this very thing. That he which hath begun a good work in you. Will perform it until the day of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. And that's the confidence that we have to hold. We all, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. And we're not called to be perfect according to the works of the law. It doesn't mean that we use that as a cloak of maliciousness. But it does mean that mistakes are going to be made on your journey to perfection. And if you can receive it, if you are of the elect, you're perfect already. Blessed is the man whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. 
That is the crown that you're striving for. And we have to continue to strive for that with the confidence that we can attain that reward. And the reason I say that and the reason that the Lord put the spirit on me to do this video and many others like it is because I do understand that we have come up in the side of a system that has made it its priority in destroying the minds and the confidence of you Negro, Latino and Native American men who are the children of Israel, who are actually sons of God. Who are the men that the Lord has chosen and above all nations. And that's why this world is so bent on destroying that confidence. Likewise, in the women of our nation as well. But if you can bind the strong man, you can spoil his house. And what the Lord has given us, this comfort, this gospel, is supposed to make us lively. It's supposed to give us a lively hope. All right. Let me go to that real quick. This is first Peter's one and three. Blessed be the power and father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach from the dead. And you have to ask yourself, you know, you have to be very transparent with yourself and ask yourself, is your hope lively? Because if it's not, then you're not really thinking about your putting yourself in that best case scenario. When you imagine how this world is going to play out, doesn't mean that you don't fear the Lord. To put on, therefore, as the elect does not mean you don't fear the Lord. But what it means is that you, in, in some way, shape, form or fashion, still believe that you're running uncertainly, that you're running for a reward that you may never receive. And while that is possible, we are exhorted to put on, therefore, as the elect and follow that belief with works. If you're unsure, show your diligence to make your calling of election sure. But either way, what if the best case scenario is being played out for you through the spirit? What if every trial and tribulation that you're going through is going to make you that finished product like it mentions in Philippians, the first chapter? And that is something that we have to consider daily. This flesh is built to fight against anything that is um, productive for the spirit. And the faith and confidence of Yahweh Shemel Shai for you in your personal walk, for you and your family, if you continue to seek the kingdom first, is something that your flesh is automatically going to be against. And that goes down to your very thoughts. So I wanted to go into this through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemel Shai to exhort to continue to meditate on the beautiful things that the Lord has prepared for those who love him. To understand that the process that you're going through right now through the spirit is not in vain. That there is a light at the end of the tunnel, even for you. If Lord willing, we continue. And if Lord willing, we are called and chosen. With that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakodash, the one of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and the sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.